Hi, I'm Dr. Renee Threlfall, a research scientist at the Food Science Department at the U of A System. I'm going to talk to you about the harvest and quality of hops. As the hop cones become more mature or ripe on a vine, it's important to check their ripeness. And we can use our touch, smell, and sight to do this. The hop cones, the, br the brats, which are the green uh, part of the hop cone, become papery and a lighter in color. So they go from a dark green to a lighter green. The cones also become lighter in weight and the cones feel less moist as they mature or become closer to ripeness. And if you crush a cone in your hand that you've harvested, the cone um, should not smell grassy or like alfalfa. It should smell more fruity or floral in aroma. The lupulins turn from a white, white, yellow, white, yellow to a really golden color as shown in the photo here. And the dry matter content of the cone will be about 20 to 25%, which is in terms of moisture content about 80%. And the lupulin glands uh, will be full and dimpled and almost become opaque. And the exterior portion of the cone, um, the edges will turn brown or start to turn brown. After, the, after you've determined that the cones are ready to be harvested, then we want to um, decide how we're going to harvest them. So we have two methods for picking hops. You can, you can pick by hand, which is recommended for first year harvest, or you can cut down the vine, which is recommended for all harvest after the first year. If you cut down the vine, cut two to three feet above the ground to prevent injury to the root system and crown. Uh, the first year vine, for first year vines, you want to try to pick the cones from the vine and not cut the vine down until the vine dies, dies off. Once the vine is cut down or you, you've harvested the vines after they've cut down, you can, you can hand pick them from a vine or you can mechanically um, pick the vines, the cones from the vines, depending on the situation and the scale that you have at your farm. One helpful tip for to remember is to wear durable abrasive resistant clothing, gloves and goggles during hop cone harvest because the vines have hooked hairs that can cause skin rash and small cuts. Hop cones are typically used for wet or dry brewing. In most cases, probably a majority of the hops cones that are harvested are dried prior to brewing. And you can expect one to two pounds of dry hops per mature hop plant. Some methods for drying hops are to use a food dehydrator. That's the easiest way to dry hops as it ensures air movement, but does not excessively get excessively hot. Uh, you can use a well-ventilated oven, particularly a convection oven. You can uh, spread the hops on a pan and place it in the oven. Uh, ensure that the airflow is adequate in the oven. Check it every 20 minutes so you do not over dry the hops. The temperature should never exceed 140 uh, Fahrenheit, no matter what method of drying you use. Um, if you use a temperature too high, it will destroy the quality of the hops. You can also use hop drying screens. This is to take like a window screen or a house air filter, spread the cones on, the, on there and place in a warm dry location. You cover with some kind of fabric that can let air flow through but keeps the, the cones kind of dark. Um, and you wanna leave for a few days in this area where a fan is blowing to maintain airflow. You can also elevate the screens instead of putting them directly on the table, put them onto blocks so that you have airflow occurring underneath the screens. Evaluating the hops cones are, for dryness are important for the harvest, but also the drying process. So the hops need, after they're dried, a moisture content of about eight to 10% to prevent any kind of molding or other deterioration of the quality. To test for dryness, you, want, you can look at the cone, break it apart, uh, see that it's brittle and it should snap in half very easily. Uh, when dry, that yellow powdery lupulin should easily fall from the cone and the leaves on the exterior of the cone will be papery and springy in texture. If a hop cones are not properly dried before storage, they will become moldy, wilted, and rancid and impact your quality parameters, which is going to impact the sales of your hops. You also, after you dry the hops, want to package the hops. So weigh and separate the hops into one or two ounces. Place the hops into some type of freezer bag, uh, a food saver bag, or airtight jars. 
no matter what the container, you want to remove as much of the air as possible from the container. And an ideal way to that is to use a vacuum sealer because that's what a vacuum sealer does. You put the hops cones in the bag, uh, put the bag on the sealer. It pulls out the air while sealing the bag at the same time. You also want to label the package with the type of hop, hop the weight of the hops, and the date harvested. Place hops um, uh, it, that are in the container into a freezer. If you can't get them immediately frozen, then put them into a refrigerator to move into a freezing environment. Important quality attributes of hops, we've already talked about moisture content in terms of harvest and drying. And after drying, we wanna have about 10% moisture and um, that, can, that moisture content can be calculated and uh, presented as a percent of the dry weight. But in terms of the composition that is values that are important for hops and selling hops are individual acids. The alpha acids are the cohumulin and adhumulin, often referred to as total alpha acids, and the total beta acids are colupulone and adlupulone. And these are also expressed as a dry weight. So in brewing, the total acids are used for to attribute bitterness into the in bitterness into the beer, and the total beta acids are used for longevity. So, you, as you see in the package that is shown on the slide, you have a Centennial, which is a cultivar of hops with an alpha acid of about ten percent and a beta acid of about four point six percent, which will give the idea of what the brew for the what the brewer will need to know in order to use this particular hops. Um, we also evaluated uh, the quality of our hops grown in Arkansas in 2020 in a study where we looked at the cultivar and the fertility, some fertility treatments, different rates. And so the cultivars we looked at were Cascade, Cashmere, Centennial, Crystal, Nugget, and Zeus. We were not able to get any data for Centennial and Nugget due to missing plants and low amount of cones. And then the fertility treatments we looked at were uh, low standard and high fertility rates. What we found was that you know, cultivar had the biggest impact on the total acids, regardless of alpha and beta. The Cascade cultivar had the highest total alpha acids with 6.31%, followed by Zeus at 5.36%, then Kashmir and Crystal. Whereas Crystal had the total highest total beta acids, followed by Cascade, Kashmir, and Zeus. The fertility rates um, only impacted the total beta acids. The low fertility rate had the highest total beta acids at 5.95%, while the total standard, uh, the, the standard rate had the lowest total beta acids. And so that these rates actually give the brewer an idea of how well these cultivars are going to do in um, in a brewing situation. And so far, you know, we're seeing very um, very good numbers with Cascade and Zeus for potential in Arkansas in terms of the total acid and total beta total alpha acids and total beta acids for the hops grown here in Arkansas in 2020. So hops, aroma, and flavor attributes, you know, they're impacted by the cultivar or the variety that you choose to grow, the, the growing location, how you're cultivating that plant or pruning that plant or managing the vines, the number of vines that you decide to grow um, per plant. And then uh, after, you know, on the post-harvest end, you have the harvesting, the drying, the processing, and the storage are all going to impact these aroma and flavor attributes, which are very um, unique to hops. And so as you're, you know, some of the, some of the, the aspects of hops quality we're looking for are floral and fruity notes, citrus, spicy, herbal, earthy, grassy, and evergreen. And these attributes, while found in the hops, will be, will transfer over into the beer in the brewing process if they're used, uh, you know, for bittering early on or if they use in dry hopping in later processes of the brewing. So thanks for your consideration and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.